Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Remko Rinkema, and you are watching Run It Back, the show in which we watch old school poker action. Uh, we go back into the archives really, really deeply every now and then. And today is one of those days as I'm flying solo to do some shout outs, to interact with the chat, just to have a good time, laid back, chill, Thursday night, Thursday afternoon, wherever you're watching. And we are diving into the 1991 World Series of Poker main event. 1991, the year in which there were 18 WSOP bracelet events, so things still meant something. It still meant something when you won a bracelet back in 1991. It's not like right now, where there's 90 bracelet events uh, you know, in the Rio, and then there's a 7,000 bracelet events online. No, only 18. 18 bracelet events back in 91, and for the first time ever, a million dollar first prize in the main event, which had a total of 215 entries. So think about that. 215 entries for the WSB main event, the very first time they were awarding a million dollar first prize and we'll get to see who wins. But I just want to name off a few people that uh, came close to the final table that didn't make it. Um, Robert Turner, Gabe Kaplan, uh, Brent Carter. Um, who else we got here? We got um, Jason Lester, Mike Sexton, Rich Corbin, um, Bobby Baldwin. We have lots of big names. Hamid Dasmalchi, who uh, later went on to win the WSOP main event. Those all cashed in total. There were 36 places paid in this tournament. And uh, like I said before, a million dollars up top. Now, you might wonder, what were the payouts for this event? They were hysterical. Let me tell you that. Hysterical. If you finished in 10th place, you got $11,500. If you win, you got a million bucks. So think about that. So it goes 11, 5, 17, 250, 23,000, 28, 34, 69, 115, 201, 400, and then a million dollars. Insane payouts. Just completely ridiculous. Anyway, welcome to the show. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I'm live on Twitch, on Facebook, and on YouTube. We're just going to have some fun with this. We're going to roll the intro, see what's up. I'll do some shout outs in just a bit. You guys, please let me know where you're watching from. I'd love to hear it. Let's see what this intro had to say uh, from back in 91. I'm pretty sure it's going to be epic. I've never seen this before. I'm Chris Marlowe. We welcome you inside Binion's Horseshoe Hotel and Casino here in downtown Las Vegas, Nevada. A hotel known worldwide as the site of the World Series of Poker. And this year, the drama continues as the world's best poker players compete for its most prestigious title. Amazing. This is amazing. This is the 22nd annual World Series of Poker. Wow. I'm hyped. $1 million in $10,000 bills. For over 30 years, this display has been the hallmark of Binion's Horseshoe. And today, one lucky player is going to walk away with a cool million. Anyone can sign up to challenge the best of the best. All you need is a little skill, patience, knowledge, and a little luck to win the prize of a lifetime. Johnny Moss is going to win the world championship this year. The entry fee is 10 grand, and it doesn't matter if you're young or old. Well, I'm a pretty aggressive player. I'm in a lot of hands. And Look at Stewie. Look at the hair. Come on. I mean, Stu Unger at its best. His hair looks dashing. He's got a nice shirt on. I love, I love seeing Stu like this. I'm known to be a pretty good Nolan Nolan player. But make sure you watch out for some of the sharks. Well, those that learn to play, the easier and the better living we make. And some of them even show up in disguise. <laughs> Here, this is my financial advisor. I'm not afraid of them. They know it. Last year's champ flew in weeks ago from Europe to sharpen up. Now this year, everybody is going to watch every hair that moves in my body. You know? Or this year's war of champions. Put a lot of chips into the pot. Make them lay down their hands. And since I turned 16, I've been watching him. Johnny's 84 years old. I mean, today's ship doesn't sail on yesterday's win. I think I'm the only virgin that hold him in this tournament. If you bet a dollar on me to win, and I win, you can get your own island in the South Pacific. <laughs> Welcome to the 1991 World Series of Poker. This is for the World Championship. First prize will be a million dollars. For 22 years, the World Series of Poker has attracted the best poker players to the official home of the game. Wow. Binion's Horseshoe in downtown Las Vegas. Can we just can we just all just admire the look and feel of this event? I mean, Brent Hanks' dad playing 
in the 1991 WSOP. That's just fantastic to see. We had a uh, Mr. Top Hat guy here. We have a beautiful um, red windbreaker over there, which is definitely something that Brent Hanks has in his closet. Um, what else we got here? Well, of course, it's a million dollars. That's ben that's Jack Binion doing the announcement. Gabe Kaplan, not gray yet. I mean, long, long time ago. Um, this guy I've seen before as well. You guys, please shout out if you see uh, if you see any recognizable faces that I might not re remember. Um, but look at Doyle. Doyle looks like he just came straight off the sailboat, wearing the all white, white hat, white shirt. I'm sure he's wearing white pants too, just to match to go the outfit to put it all together. And he said Johnny Moss was 84 back when this was happening. The grand old man of poker, Johnny Moss. Fantastic to have him also make a brief appearance here in the show. I can already see he did not make the money, so maybe we won't get to see him in the broadcast. But in general, it's just great to look back at all this old action. Um, this is maybe Dole's best look. But anyway, Brent, if you're just tuning in, you you just missed it because, uh, by the way, Johnny Chan looking terrific. Uh, we just saw... We <laughs> look at this. There's Slim. And some look at this boy. Look, who recognizes the man in the frame right now? Who recognizes him? Look at, I mean, I'm just going to pause it right here. The, Gabe Kaplan's financial advisor. Mr. Puggy Pearson. What a, what a fantastic image. I think he even dyed his beard, or maybe that's a fake beard. A little little gray in there. Um, but I don't even know what to say. That is that is, that is funny. Uh, Telly Savalas, Mike D said it on YouTube. That is amazing. Oh, and John and Bill say it on Facebook. Why am I even hosting this show? You guys know way better than I do. That is amazing. Puggy Pearson in the show. All right, let's keep it rolling. Let's let's see what's happening. In disguise. Here, this is my financial advisor. I'm not afraid of them. They know it. Last year's champ flew in weeks ago from Europe to sharpen up. Now this year, everybody is going to watch every hair that moves in my body. You know? For this year's war of champions. Put lala chips into the pot. Make them lay down their hands. And since I turned 16, I've been fighting again. Well, Johnny's 84 years old. I mean, today's ship doesn't sail on yesterday's wind. I think I'm the only virgin that hold him in this tournament. If you bet a dollar on me to win, and I win, you can get your own island in the South Pacific. Welcome to the 1991 World Series of Poker. This is for the World Championship. First prize will be a million dollars. For 22 years, the World Series of Poker has attracted the best poker players to the official home of the game, Binion's Horseshoe in downtown Las Vegas. But this year, for the first time ever, the winner of the 10,000 Buy'em No Limit Texas Hold'em Championship will walk away with a million bucks. And there's nothing better than a high-stakes poker game. Even Phil Hellmuth Jr. put in the 10 grand. To there he is, the champ, Mr. Phil Hellmuth. I mean, I was. I'm wondering if he was if he was eating snacks back Even back here during this time. Lovely uh, Walkman setup with the with the blue windbreaker there. Um, I'm pretty sure he was just as angry uh, as he was li right now uh, last night. Sorry. Um, in, in case anyone hasn't watched it yet, last night uh, Phil Helmut versus Nick Wright on High Stakes Duel Three. Fantastic round one matchup. I will highly recommend watching it if you're unsure about watching High Stakes Duel. If you're not ready yet to sign up for Poker Go, let me just tell you, go to YouTube or to our Facebook page. Check out the clip that we posted this morning or this afternoon of Helmuth losing his mind, dropping 18 F-bombs in the course of less than a minute, completely losing his mind. Uh, that alone is worth the price of admission. Phil Helmuth Jr. put in the 10 grand to try to repeat his win of 1989 when he was crowned the youngest ever to win the title. Last year's winner, Mansoor Matlubi, is back to defend his title. So is three-time champion Johnny Moss and the Henri Amarillo Slim Preston who won it in 72. Well, and anyone that differs with that opinion, I'm not hard to find. There's also a few two-time champions out to take the biggest payoff ever, including Doyle, Texas Dolly Brunson, the exciting Johnny Chan, who gives a clinic in poker whenever he plays, and the kid, Stu Unger, who is going for a third win. It not only the million dollars, the uh, publicity that goes along with it, it's, it's the main event of the year for the poker players. Several talented women also entered so they could face some of the most respected names of the game. But what's so very intriguing is that any one of these 215 people here can win. Stay tuned for all the excitement and find out which one of these great players truly has the ultimate poker face worth one million dollars. You know, when the stakes are high and the money is big, you can expect everybody wants a piece of the action, including two of Hollywood's biggest stars, a guy who likes lollipops, who loves you, baby, and a former teacher who just wouldn't give up. 
If you win here or come in close here, you can consider yourself a world-class player. That's true, true no other place in the world except the billions. This is my return, my comeback. I spoke to Jim Palmer and he said, you got to do it, so I'm coming back at 45. Money and pride always bring back the defending champions, like Mansoor Matlubi, who won last year's World Series of Poker. That final hand is probably the most incredible hand of poker you're going to see at this level. You know, I was winning before the flop, I was winning on the flop, then the next card, uh, I had a 20 to 1 shot of getting out of it. And then the last card, uh, a miracle happened. Oh, a little years bit better. Old. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> it's the worst thing can possibly happen to anybody is to lose. <laughs> I won't be surprised if I go out the first day. The first player to be knocked out lasted only 10 minutes. Many former world champions were. I mean, come on, Doyle. I, I want to know what the sailboat looked like back in the day. Uh, for people who are just tuning in, we are watching the 1991 WSP main event. Some quick shout outs. I see Brian, Riley, John, and Bill active on Facebook. Uh, we got DDR Guido on Twitch. He says, can we discuss spoilers? Of course, go ahead. I think we're well beyond the, uh, the spoiler phase here uh, in this event. Um, Mark Pearson makes a good point. He says, is the giveaway for the first 500 subs on the second channel still happening? Yes, it is still happening. We're actually working on the prizes. That giveaway will be next week on Thursday. I'm very hopeful that I have a special guest to do the drawing with me and we'll give, give, give away a signed, um, a signed felt I believe it is from High Stakes Duel, but I will confirm that next week. But it will be signed felt. We're going to give away some smaller, uh, smaller uh, prizes as well, some signed decks of cards, uh, some books signed by Phil Helmies. We're going to do some fun stuff. By the way, in case you're new to this show, uh, go to our Run It Back Clips channel. Subscribe to that channel, and then you'll also be entered into the draw next week. Um, we're, we're, we're postponing it by one week. We're just getting the prizes sorted. Uh, but that's going to be happening next week on the show on Thursday with a special guest that Brent Hanks is going to going to deliver to me here on the show. I'm going to I'm gonna hold him to that. It's, it's going to be great. We're eliminated on the first day. Doyle Brunson. The kid, Stu Unger, out. Phil Helmuth Jr., out. And even world-famous Amarillo Slim Preston was a victim of the new gunslingers. By the third day, you're going to see some heavy emotions. Mirage Hotel president and 1978 world champion Bobby Baldwin lasted long enough to place 29th. Johnny Chan in the blue sweatsuit was an early victim. Wow. Along with the grandmaster, Johnny Moss. And Kojak lost. But Telly Savalas did do better than most. What do you mean we did very well? did very well. well. We're both broke. Former champ Puggy Pearson arrived dressed as the Ayatollah to throw off Mansoor Matlube, an Iranian-born Englishman. Oh Surprisingly, the stunt may have worked because the Mansoor also got knocked out in the first three hours, finishing 186th. Well, it takes uh, a good run to win and a bad run to lose. You're not playing amateurs. You're playing 200 best poker players in the world. They can all play, can all win, all capable. If you're playing with a bunch of schoolboys, okay, it's very difficult to lose. From 215 players to these 27, who definitely aren't schoolboys. They're the best of the bunch. Three tables of nine great players, but only six make it to the final championship table. When you go this far, it's even more painful to lose, especially if your name is Hans Tuna Lund and you came so close last year by finishing second. Well, most people, when they get knocked out, they try to hide it and be good sports, but as soon as they walk away and the camera's off from there, they're feeling real bad. <laughs> well, I went out 19. And, uh, to be honest, I'm not real happy about it. I know it's a game of luck and, and a game of skill. Do they still make glasses like this? And by the way, I need that hat. If anyone has a lead on how I can get that hat, I would love to know that. The, I mean, these glasses are just tremendous, by the way. Tremendous. Uh, thanks for everyone who's tuning in. This is Running Back. It's a little bit weird today, a little bit odd. We're watching the 1991 WC main event. I'm pausing it every now and then just to catch my breath and to get caught up on all the action on the screen because we're seeing so many uh, funny things. Uh, Patrick Quinn saying on YouTube, did Stu Unger unfortunately go broke? Um, yes, he did. He did go broke uh, several times, actually, um, over the course of his life. And uh, sadly, he passed away in 1998. Um, if you're interested in more Stu Unger stories, I highly recommend 
watching the run it back show i did with his daughter stephanie unger that was um, uh, maybe two months ago i did a show with her watching the 81 and the 97 main event final tables with stephanie unger and uh, she told a lot of stories about her dad so if you haven't seen that yet please go check that out no, we just lost audio there for a second, which means I'll just uh, talk for another few seconds. Um, let's see what else we got here uh, in the chat. Um, I mean, these specs are just fantastic. Um, <laughs> Charlie says on Twitch, growing up, I definitely thought poker was just for old folks. It definitely was for a very long time. And also keep in mind, uh, back in the day, uh, there were no, not really any small stakes. So it was pretty hard to get into the game and there was no way to make money online to get into those games. So the only thing you had to do was have basically a job or, or some kind of way to make money before you could even get into some of these games. Um, Mohammed, by the way, tuning in on Facebook, watching from Dubai. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, everyone else as well, do let me know where you're watching from. I'd love to hear that. Oh, I guess we're we're out of audio here for a second. I think it's a VLC issue. It'll, it'll come back. Oh, is that Humberto? Is that Humberto Brennus? I think I think it might be. It looks a lot like Humberto Brennus. I feel like everyone back in this day looks like a gangster. It's just it's just a specific kind of look. Um, I don't know why my audio is gone. It's really annoying. Let's see. Can we fix this? Huh. No, it's not doing anything. All right, that's a. Those are some short shorts, Mr. Gabe Kaplan. Let me restart VLC. Let's see if we can fix this in some way. Oh yeah, VLC definitely crashed. All right, while I'm getting this restarted, um, please know that I do this show every single week. I've had lots of guests on in the past, such as Chris Moneymaker. Uh, I've had Greg Raymer on the show, Joe Hashem. Um, we rel relived a lot of these main events from the past. Um, sadly, for this final table. I did not have anyone in mind to join me, so I decided to fly solo and, and give you guys uh, a taste of the action here uh, of the 1991 main event. By the way, also to let you know, every single thing that I do here on the show, that I watch here, is available on Poker Go. So if you're still on the fence about subscribing to Poker, Poker Go, uh, all you have to do is, is just trust me and believe me that it's well worth the price of admission because you get to watch all these classics on there as well. So let me see if I can... Find the spot where we left off. Let's see. We're probably somewhere here. Oh, this is already the final table. Okay. There's, there it is. We were somewhere over here. Um, so, yeah, every single thing that I show you guys on Running Back is available on Poker Go. I think we're back. I think we're back. have to win it all or lose it all by running out of chips. Got down, got up, went down, got up again. And uh, the last hand, I drew out on a couple of times on people. And the last time somebody uh, drew out on me, but the king, so that's the way it goes. That's, that's the name of the game. Very happy to have with me now the president and general manager of Binion's Horseshoe Hotel and Casino and the man who gives away all the money, Jack Binion. And Jack, uh, are you surprised that uh, the tournament has grown so much since 1970? Oh, naturally. I, nobody in their wildest dreams could have dreamed that, that the poker uh, tournament would have gotten this popular and that it would have gotten this big. Last year, you said, I am going to give away $1 million to the winner, and this year you are. How did that promise come about? Well, I, I, have, to, I have to plead the, uh, that it was Insanity? No, no, because it wasn't that big a promise, because last year we had 190-some-odd people, so, and it's grown every year, so naturally I knew it was going to be big enough to give the million dollars away, and for some reason, let's say that we have a, uh, a total disaster around here. Uh, then I would have been on the hook. So, in all, tr in, in truth, uh, it wasn't that big a promise. The the play, uh, the the poker tournament's the one that made the, the the promise, not me. Final question: How big can this tournament get? Look five or ten years down the line. Well, I tell you what, we're we're looking at it, and I'm saying it's growing between 10 and 15 percent a year. So you just compound that out because it, it's done that pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 grown at that rate. So it just looks like that's going to be the growth rate for a while. Jack, congratulations. Another fine tournament. You're making it happen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we, we, we have a lot of fun with it. We're enjoying it. Jack. So 10 to 15 percent year over year from 1970 up to 1991. We all know what happened, you know, the year that Chris Moneymaker won. There were um, 
there were a lot more players. I don't know if those are the number to off the top of my head, maybe like 800 or something. And then uh, it just went bananas in the years after 2.5K, 5,000, 8,000. And of course, we've been in uh, the uh, seven to 8,000 range for uh, for all the years since then. So uh, pretty funny to hear Jack Binion talk about this 15, 10 to 15% rate growth rate, growth rate year over year. And uh, look where we are now. And, and maybe, maybe... Um, we'll have 10K this year if, if COVID is, is dealt with by then because I do think there's a huge appetite for poker. The only problem is we have some severe travel restrictions, which is going to make it really, really tough to get all these players out here. Jack Binion, the man here at Binion's. And losing means... I'm going to the showers. <laughs> oh, no, going to the showers, coined by Gabe Kaplan, 1991 WSP main event. Can we can we all remember that in case anyone's taking notes? I think that Jason Mercer uh, said that he coined it, but I think Gabe Kaplan um, is is the one that coined it here at the WSOP. I'll go out and jump off a building or something. <laughs> no, I'm just joking at that. We'll be right back to Binion's in a minute to show you which six players made it to the final table and who'll go home with one million dollars in his pocket. Welcome back to the World Series of Poker. Chris Marlowe with poker expert Chip Reese. Chip, Texas Hold'em, uh, a relatively simple game, and yet it's complicated. There's Chip. Explain how the play works. Okay, Chris. Texas Hold'em is a variation of the popular game Seven Card Stud, where the best high hand wins the pot. Here's how the game's played. Today we're going to start with a $1,000 ante, where everybody ante's $1,000, and the dealer will pull the ante's in. At that time, everybody will receive two cards, starting with the man to the left of the dealer button. That man is the dealer for this hand, and that button will rotate every deal. Okay. We all receive our first two cards, and myself, the man to the left of the dealer button, must force it for $2,000 at the start of play today. That's called the small blind. Okay. You then, the man to my left, has to put 4000 in, or double that amount. Now, this is a blind. mandatory bet. Absolutely. I have to put this in, so I'm going to. Before you even look at your cards. All right. I don't now it's up to problem. Armando. He can either call the 4000 fold or raise. He's decided to call. Mark, he's going to take a look at his hand. He's going to fold. All right. He chickened I'll, out. I'll call the 2000 Now, you can raise if you want to, or you can say deal. Well, I haven't looked at my cards yet, so I'm going to put it in there. In the dark. Yes. A okay. Blind You're going to call in the dark. <laughs> right. Here we go. This is amazing. Burn a card. Now, we're going to turn three cards up in the center of the table. Now, this is the flop. This is called the flop. Explain. These are community cards which every player uses along with his own two hole cards to form at this time a five-card poker hand. Since I'm to the left of the dealer button, I must act first. I can either check or bet. I don't have a very good hand, so I'm going to check. Okay, now, if I were to have a good hand, I should bet, right? Well, a good hand or a bad hand, right. you're allowed to bluff in this I'm going to bet $4,000. <laughs> okay. $4, this is amazing. You, Armando. I'm bluffing. He calls. <laughs> I'm going to go out. All right. Dealer pulls the pot in, burns a card. This is called the turn or four streak. Still a community card. Still Everybody can use this. At this point in time, All you right. each have six-card poker hands, four out there and two in your hand. Since you're to the left of the dealer right. button now, it's your turn to act first. All right, I'm going to bet $10,000 to you, Armando. Armando he's calls. staying in, too. Yeah, he must have a pretty good hand. <laughs> Let's burn, and we're going to see the last card now. This is called the river. Down the river. It's the king of spades. This puts a lot of possibilities out here. Now, this game that we play, Texas Hold'em, is a no-limit game. You can either check or you could bet from one chip up to your whole stack. It's your option. Now, question, if I bet all my money and Armando does not have enough money to see me, what happens? Contrary to popular belief, Armando doesn't have to throw his hand away. If he can't cover your bet, yeah. he puts all his chips in. You put the amount of chips in to match how many chips you have, okay. take your remaining chips back, and you both play for what's in the center of the All right. Okay? I think I have a good hand. I'm going all in. Match it. He's betting it all, Armando. All oh. Armando calls. <clears throat> okay, let's turn our two hole cards up and see what we got. Ace high flush. Chris has the best wow. possible hand you can have in All right. Run. There's three spades out <laughs> on the board, and that's called the nuts. We hit, in the poker lingo, we call that the best possible hand you can have. Yeah. Armando had a good hand, too, but it wasn't quite as now good. Now, I good. continue, and Armando goes home. Yeah, he's history. <laughs> and I'm the champion. The poker tournament. That's right. He I goes love out. this game. They won't remember his name next year, but you'll be back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See the I mean, we should probably clip this and put it on, a, put, put it on YouTube as, as a bit of... Um, um, as a bit of an explainer, as, as a bit of action uh, for, the, for the people to relive what it was like back in 1991 to, to have poker explained to you on TV. I, I can only imagine. You know, Chip Reese did a really good job. That is, uh, that is pretty amazing. Um, if you guys have any questions in the chat, please send them in. We are still watching the 1991 WSOP main event. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I think we're about to dive into some final table action. Here is Mr. Emerald Slim with some thoughts. Those chips have no value uh, with me. They're just clay. 
If that were cash, this tournament would go on forever. And not only the million dollars, the uh, publicity that goes along with it, it's, it's the main event of the year for the poker players. We'll have more poker action from Binion's on Prime Network after this. Welcome back to the World Series of Poker here at Binion's Horseshoe Hotel and Casino. I'm Chris Marlowe, very happy to be joined now by a man who was voted five times the best poker player in the world by his peers, Chip Reese. And Chip, we're down to the final six, the final table uh, strategy for these six men, early strategy. Chips play a very important factor here, Chris. I think early on, the players would see action early in this event. Guys at the top play conservatively, the guys at the bottom play much more aggressively then. Absolutely, and the reason for it is the breakdown in prize money. When you get to third and second place, the difference in prize money becomes about $200,000. I think that's a lot of money to anybody. And first place prize, $1 million, so a big difference between first and second. Absolutely. Thanks to Jack Binion, he guaranteed a million dollars in prize money this year, whether he had the money or not. Unfortunately, we had a world record amount of entries. Out of 215 players, 36 get paid. Sixth place, $34,500. Fifth, 69 grand. Fourth, 115,000. Third, 201,250. Second, 402,500. And first place, $1 million in the championship gold bracelet. All right, the dealer is set. We are ready to go. Let's get right to the action. In seat number one, Don Williams comes to the final table with $160,000. He's from right here in Las Vegas. In seat position number two, Robert Veltry with $475,000. In seat three, there's Brad Dougherty starting with $240,000. He's a professional gambler by trade. Seat four, Ali Farsai with $115,000 to work with. Seat five from Arizona, Tucson, Don Holt. Don Holt. favorite with $365,000. And from Alaska, Perry Green tries to stake a claim with two hundred dollars Cards are out. $15,000 in the pot initially. Oh, yeah. $1,000 per man is the ante. And a three and $6,000 blind, a mandatory bet. You can see the dealer button is at Bob Dougherty. So the play will rotate around. And not calling will be very, very what we call tight play, Chris. Here goes Ali. He's going to make it. Ali Farside going again. to go all in once again. So Farside trying to build up his stack of chips. Ali Farside moves all in. Looks like he's going to get called. We may have our first casualty. He's calling I'm Ali Farside. Okay. All right, here comes we, the flop. We've got about a $155,000 pot here. Okay, ace nine, king jack. So king jack. The ace nine is about a three to two favorite, Chris. He's gonna win this hand about 60% of the time. We are ready for the flop, here we go. There we go, big all in. Cards. Big play here at Binion's. Six of diamonds, three of hearts, five of diamonds, a couple of diamonds, so. Don still got the best hand with the ace nine. Ali has to catch a king or a jack at this point to have the best hand. Okay, getting ready for four street, the fourth common card. Ten of diamonds. This gives Ali 14 chances to win the hand. He's got to catch nine diamonds, three kings, or two jacks. And fifth street. Here we go. Ali needs a diamond. And Don Holt wins the hand, and Ali Farsai is eliminated. A tremendous tournament for the man from Tehran, Iran. Ali Farsai. There it is. Oh, Mickey Appleman in the crowd, by the way. We just lost our first player uh, at the final table here in the 1991 main event um jonathan says i love the theatrics i'm sure no one knew he would have the nut flush in this hand going back to the little expra explainer chip reese did with uh with chris marlowe earlier on on the channel uh, quick draw says i was five years old in 1991 
I'll do you one better. I was four years old in 1991. I was, I'm from 87. So yeah, definitely way before our time. Uh, <laughs> definitely really funny to see uh, what it looked like and what the play was like. By the way, you guys, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat. Do you think you would have been a favorite in this tournament with your current skills right now? Do you think that you could be a favorite in the 1991 WSP main event with, with your current skills. I'd love to hear that. I'd love to think, I'd love to know how you guys think about the play back then. Surprised to get to the final table? Yeah, I was pretty surprised. I've been playing this tournament for the last uh, five years. And I mean, the best finish I had was 10th. But this year, you know, I mean, I came sixth. You know, I mean, I was very excited and surprised about it. You played very well, but uh, in the final table, you started with uh, a short stack of yeah, chips, and that made chips, it tough on you. Know, yeah, right. You know, I had to make a move uh -huh. pretty soon, you know, I mean, in order for me to win. Yeah. So I had to, you know, I mean, when I had King Jack, I was pretty much favorite to have a best hand against a big fly. But this happened that he had a better hand. Well, yeah. tough luck, but congratulations. $34,000. What are you going to do with the money? Well, I'm going to be playing poker. So <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, if I would have won it, you know, I would have played higher. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> So Very curious to see uh, what happened to some of these players. Um, when I look at uh, Farsai's Hendenma page, he has not recorded a live tournament result since 1998. I don't know if he, I don't know how old he was back then. I don't know if he passed away or if he stopped playing poker. Um, but this, this was definitely um, the biggest result of his tournament career. Um, he had two more WSP caches after this one, uh, but 1998 was his last ever recorded cache. So I, I don't know what happened to Farsai, but he's definitely no longer around in poker so we're five-handed right now for those who are just tuning in in the 1991 wsb main event we have perry green don williams bob veltry don holt and brett Doher brett doherty that's a hard name to say Side finishes in sixth place he takes home thirty-four thousand five hundred dollars in chip we're now down to five players uh, has the game changed much from six to five Maybe from a psychological point of the view, a few of the players may want to play a little faster, Chris, but there's still a very small amount of money in the pot at the beginning of the hand relative to the $2 million on the table. So they should still play conservatively. The player with the most money still has a big advantage? Absolutely. And if you'll notice, the players with the most money tend to dominate the game. They pick up those annies and they're kind of controlling the action as it goes along. Okay, five players left at the World Series of Poker. We'll continue with the action here from Binion's after this. Welcome back to Binion's Horseshoe. I'm Chris Marlowe, along with Chip Reese. We are now down to our final five players here at the World Series of Poker. And uh, Chip, perhaps you can give us an idea of the personalities of the five that are left. What kind of a game will we see? What you have here are five very experienced tournament players with five very different personalities. Don Williams and Bob Beltry, I would term as the most creative players still left in the game. Brad Doherty and Perry are the more solid, tight players in the game and Don Williams is kind of in between. But at this stage in the game, anybody can snap. Psychologically, anybody can decide to move their chips. Do you expect aggressive action now or conservative play? I still anticipate a little bit conservative play. We may have one or two big pots, but there's not very much money in the beginning of the hand right now. There's only $15,000 and there's two million on the table, so they should still play very conservatively. Okay, five or left. Let's get back to the action. Don Holt seems to be in command. Chip we got Don Holt here on in the frame. Uh, Chris on Facebook says, my inflation senses are tingling. 34,091 was a decent chunk of change. Yes, so 10K buy-in right now in 2021 would have been a 20K buy-in back in those days if we look at the inflation comparison. So basically a 20K main event to put some perspective on it. 216 players in the main event this year uh, in 1991 and a million dollars up top. Wise, confidence wise. Holt, uh, 64 years old the oldest competitor in this competition. Been wearing the same pants for three days. He's got on his lucky pants. And Perry Green goes all in. So here we go. So two players, Dougherty and Green, are all in. Veltri made the initial bet. And we have a huge hand brewing here. Perry's got to have a very good hand, Chris, to make this play. We call this coming in cold over the top of the razor. Rannard, $5,000 for Perry Green. 
So Bob Veltri, you're looking at him right there in the Paisley shirt, must call $275,000 to stay in this pot. He opened the betting with $30,000. He's got to have a pretty good hand to be waiting this long and even thinking about it. We have had a double knockout before here at the World Series of Poker. And Veltri appearing like he may go in. Appearing like he may go in. And wouldn't this be something? Three players all in at the World Series of Poker. And he's going there in. There we go. He is going in. Now, Veltri is calling, but he's not all in. No. He is calling $275,000. 781000 in this pot, Chris. Whoever wins this pot will have a commanding lead. And here we go with the hands. Bob right. Veltri has the best hand right now. Veltri has a pair of jacks. Ace King to Brad Dougherty and a pair of eights to Perry Green. Perry's in Look at that. Three way all in here in the main event. We're five handed, so pretty big implications here. Real bad shape right here. Perry's an eight to one underdog to catch an eight on the flop, and he has to do so to stay alive. All right, we're waiting the flop. A huge hand, over $700,000 in the pot. Three common cards coming up. The crowd is into it. Possible double knockout on this hand. Let's do it, Brad. Let's do it. Here we go. The flop. So important. Ace. Queen, seven, and a couple of spades. Brad so Doherty has caught an ace on the flop. He's an overwhelming favorite to win this pot now. Keep in mind, there's a side pot where Bob Beltry is a favorite to win if Perry Green doesn't catch an ace. Fourth Street coming up. Another common card. Three of spades. Nobody has a spade in their hand. What does everybody need now? Bob needs a jack or Perry needs an eight. Otherwise, Brad Doherty wins the main pot. And it's a three of clubs. And Brad Doherty wins the pot. And that eliminates Perry Green from Anchorage, Alaska. The legendary Perry Green eliminated in fifth place. He, of course, still around to this day. Uh, his last cash at the WSOP came in 2018. Uh, legendary story of Perry Green. There's there's a bunch you can Google and find out. Uh, but he's basically been consistently cashing uh, almost every year of the WSOP, going back all the way to 1976. So Perry Green, legend of the game, uh, won a bunch of brace bracelets in the early years of, of the WSOP. Um, he's got a ace. He got he's got two ace to five low ball bracelets and a 1500 no limit that he won back in 1979 so uh if you ever if you ever uh need a good story perry green probably has them because he's been around for such a long time and here he got knocked out in fifth place darty uh won uh, or tripled up and uh, took a big pot off the um uh, bob veltry who was chip leader up until this point and now uh, the chips are shifting a little bit and he gets a round of applause what a hand. He had a tremendous hand, and he's a tremendous guy. I know how he feels when he gets knocked out of this tournament. Perry Green, uh, in retrospect, uh, you going all in with a pair of eights. If you had to do it over again, would you do it the same way? Sure would. I put him on a, uh, a hand that uh, was similar to what he had, or very similar to maybe two sevens, and then I'd be a big favorite, just like uh, I was hoping. Although I got, uh, shall we say, trapped from the rear. Were you surprised that Bob Beltry had the jacks? I was surprised that he would even call with the jacks, to be honest with I you. I think everybody was. Yeah, I think uh, had I had the jacks at this point, I would not want to play against two all-in stacks. Because what you're doing, now you're really gambling that uh, you almost have to make three jacks to win two all-in stacks. Yeah. Perry, uh, Jack McClellan, $69,000 for Perry Green. And maybe next year will be your year. Thank you very much. It's been fun, and um, I thought I could do it. I played well yesterday and uh, just didn't catch any cards today. Might have rushed it a little bit. It was fun. Though. Well, tough luck, but we'll see you again next year. Absolutely. Thank All right. you. Thanks, Perry. And so in one of the... By the way, the fact that the $69,000 in cash is just being handed to him on broadcast is is just on a different level. I, I love it. Um, uh, 
Abhirup Gupta on Facebook says, Perry giving ICM lessons in 1991. Damn right he is. Perry Green, a legend of the game. I, I love it. Uh, Shahim says, I was be- uh, I was uh, Shamim says, I was beyond excited when Hossein Ensan won. Uh, yeah, he, he definitely did it for the Iranians, uh, even though he's playing under the German flag back, back in 2019. Um, let's see what else we got here in the chat. Um, uh, Anthony says, more aggressive, but they... Uh, um, I don't know what that says. That didn't make sense. Um, Anthony also said, uh, the way they talk about the tournament chips as if it's actual cash on the table is really funny. Yes, that is really funny. But the reason for that is because um, you bought it for $10,000 and you got $10,000 worth of chips. So technically, if you think about payouts, every chip is worth a dollar in that sense. So that's that's where it originally came from because you got $10,000 worth of chips for your $10,000 entry fee. Now, of course, no longer the case. You get 30K or 40K or 50K, depending on the tournament. You even have $300 tournaments right now where you get $50,000 worth of chips. But back in those days, it was a, uh, a one-to-one ratio. Great hands in World Series of Poker history. Perry Green knocked out in fifth place. Were you surprised at uh, Perry's action? Actually, Perry made a very good play he anticipated what Brad Doherty had. Perry had the best hand. What he didn't anticipate was Bob Beltry had a very good hand right behind him. I think it was a bit of bad luck. He may have moved a little prematurely, but he made the right play because he did have the best hand against Brad with those two eights. Four players left. Don Holt, the leader right now, $700,000. Size up the other players' chip totals. Don Williams has about 325. He's the low man on the totem pole, but by no means out of it. All these chip totals are very close. Bob Beltry's in second with 625, and Brad Doherty's in third with 500. At this point, anybody can win. All right, four to go here at the World Series of Poker. We'll return to Binion's after this. Stay with us. All right, we got... Uh, left leg cemetery in the chat on YouTube. He says, I'm tuning in from Delaware. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. I appreciate it. I'd love to get Sammy Farha on my show. Uh, as you guys know, I'm always trying to get the biggest legends of the game on Run It Back, uh, but no luck with Sammy Farha. If I ever manage to pull it off, it would be amazing. Um, you guys can, by the way, also suggest uh, me having a variety of different players on the show. I know that Patrick Antonius and Jamie Gold are highly requested. Those guys have confirmed they want to do the show, but sadly, we've not been able to make it work. But maybe in the future, uh, we can we can put those guys on the show. The 22nd Annual World Series of Poker here at Binion's Horseshoe Hotel and Casino. We are now down to four players, and uh, the action heating up. And Chip, who do you make the favorite right now? Boy, that's a tough one to call, Chris. They're all very, very good players. And they're all very close in chips. Uh, you kind of put me on the spot yeah, that's here. Why I'm, that's why I'm putting you on the spot. I think the safest thing I can do here is go with the guys with the money. I think Don Holt and Bob Beltry have the most chips right now, so you have to go with them. Okay, the two players with the most chips, they have the advantage. Action heating up, as I said. Let's get back to it. And Don Holt is going to bet $30,000. 30,000 to Williams, he folds. Veltri says, I'll play. So Holt and Veltri. Over $50,000 in the pot. The flop comes seven of clubs, jack of hearts, 10 of diamonds. Those are very dangerous flop cards when there's been a bet and a call. Because that 10 jack can swing either way for low hands or high hands. Fourth Street, nine of spades. $40,000 bet by Bob Veltri. And Holt says, I'll play. Got about a $120,000 pot here. And ready for Fifth Street. Two of, two of spades. No help at all. Whoever had the best hand on Fourth Street, chances are he's still got the best hand. And Veltri now going to make a big bet. $100,000. So $100,000 to Holt. Don Holt raises 100000 And a $100,000 raise. raise. You might have called it, Chip. 100000 bet. Raise of 100000 <clears throat> Chances are Don doesn't just have an eight or he would have just called. You think Holt has the king queen? Either the king queen or the eight yeah. queen. Veltri shuffling his 100000 and he's going in. Don Veltri calls. Don Holt shows a jack-high straight. And Holt has the jack-high straight. Um, and that will win the pot. Bob had nine seven. And two pair for Bob Veltri. So a very tightly contested hand and a big hand for Don Holt. Two very surprising hands to me. I expect the both players to have a better hand in that spot. Yeah, that pot had about $500,000 in it, Chris. Don Holt's now the tournament leader. Yeah, Don Holt looks good to me. 
I don't know who his choice is. Well, I got to go along with him. I, I, I think, of course, I will tell you this, in case Mr. Holt wins it, I'll be in his hometown before he gets back home. I assure you. <laughs> Little play there from Amarillo Slim pointing out that he would travel to wherever the money goes uh, after this main event. By the way, seeing Telly Savalas here on the rail is pretty cool. Uh, sadly, he passed away in 1994. So, you know, this is towards, towards the later stages of his life. A uh, famous actor, of course, from uh, the USA. Um, me being from the Netherlands, I had never really heard of him before, but I just looked him up and uh, uh, he was uh, on the famous show called uh, Kojak. He was also a James Bond villain. Uh, so it's pretty cool to see him as part of these broadcasts, uh, sort of in his natural habitat, gambling it up with Amarillo Slim. He's going to play this hand. About $195,000, Bet Williams. Don Holt has been the hot player. Okay, we got $417,000 in the pot. $417,000 in the pot. Williams, ace nine suited. Ace ten of diamonds. So a very interesting hand. Big one. Harry Binyas, a confrontation between Don Holt from Tucson, Arizona, and Don Williams, the local favorite here from Las Vegas, Nevada. The flop, five of spades, king of diamonds. Ten of clubs. Don Holt has two tens. He's a monstrous favorite right now. The only way Don Williams can win right now is he has to catch two running cards to a flush. So Don Williams in trouble now because obviously an ace comes up. That helps Don Holt in addition to Don Williams. Don Williams has to catch two running nines or two running spades. It's a very big long shot. So Williams needs a nine or a spade. A jack of clubs. Now, this is interesting. If a queen would happen to come on the end, he could tie with the queen. Don Williams still alive. He could split the pot with a queen. Fifth Street. It's a five of hearts. And Don Holt wins the hand. Don Williams is knocked out in fourth place. So Don Williams finishes in fourth place. Uh, the prize money, $115,000. Not a bad payday, but I'm sure you were hoping for just a little more. What was your thinking going into that final hand? I was thinking he couldn't have an ace <laughs> on the button, but he did. You had ace, uh, ace nine suited, uh, normally a pretty good hand, but he had just a little better hand. Well, it's not a big hand unless you catch somebody with a, a bigger ace suited or a bigger kicker, which I did. And he'd been playing about three or four pots in a row, so I was down a hundred and some thousand in chips. I tried to take it away from him and hope he didn't have an ace. If he, if he didn't, I had a better draw hand than he had. Now, when you're low on chips, obviously you have to play a little more aggressively, and yeah. you did. Yeah, that's what I tried to do. Have fun this year? <laughs> oh, yeah, fun every year. <laughs> Congratulations. Great finish. Thank you. <laughs> so all right, that's Don Williams eliminated. Uh, we are still watching the 1991 WSP main event. Uh, Kevin in uh, on YouTube chat says, Remco has a pretty sweet gig. I do. I have the best job in the world. All I do is watch poker all day and try to decide which videos go out on our Facebook and YouTube channel. Um, and if you guys have any suggestions for me at any point, please do let me know. I'm on Twitter. You can see my handle down below. You can follow me and my DMs are always open and I appreciate you guys tuning in and I should do the show once a week. Next week, by the way, I have to remind you guys, we're doing the big draw, the big giveaway. We're going to give away a, a felt, a signed felt, which, uh, which which is a pretty good prize to win. You can use it and hang it up as a collectible, or you can just actually use it to play poker on if you have a table uh, in your house and you can get a refelted, which is pretty cool as well. Um, as a side note, you can also still enter the draw uh, that we are doing for those felts. Just subscribe to our new Run It Back Clips channel on YouTube, and everyone who is subscribed to that channel by the start of the show next week will be eligible for that random draw draw so we're giving away some decks of cards we're giving away some uh some uh signed books by phil helmuth and of course the uh top prize the signed felt which would be amazing as well all right if you guys have any questions or if you want to let me know where you're watching from i do appreciate that a lot it'd be awesome to hear from you guys as we are uh, going further and further into this main event as i believe we are down to only three players brad Dar darty um don holt and bob veltry so
Don Williams is out. He finishes in fourth place. His prize, $115,000. And ironically, Chip, uh, he was a little lucky earlier. He had four eights. No one would take him up on it, but he couldn't catch the big hand when he needed it. Chris, timing is everything in the World <laughs> Series of Poker. Don had a great hand, four eights. He didn't get any action on that hand. Later on, he couldn't catch any cards, and he was out of the tournament. Okay. Out of 215 players, we are now down to three. Who will emerge? We'll take a break. Back to Binion's after this. Stay with us. I really wish, like someone said earlier, that the original commercials from 1991 were still part of this broadcast. That would have been a lot of fun to watch. Gregory watching from Montreal. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Daniel came in the house. I appreciate you watching. It's strategy time. How do you expect the final three to go? Chris, I look for Brad Doherty to be playing very solid poker when it's down to three players. Bob Beltry and Don Holt, on the other hand, will be playing very aggressively against each other. Something's going to give between those two, and I think it'll be Doherty and either Holt or Beltry down to the last two. All right, the dealer is ready. Let's get right to the action. Three players left at the World Series of Poker. Bob Beltry, Brad Doherty, and Don Holt. And Doherty puts in 10 grand. Holt calls. And we're waiting for Bob Veltri. And Veltri going to move all in. So we have the makings of an interesting little pot here. Dougherty throws his hand away, and so does Holt. So Veltri, perhaps chopping, perhaps just who just makes the right decision at the right time, and uh, who gets lucky. And that'll be that'll be the champion. So Bob Veltri raises one hundred thousand dollars, and now it is up to Bob Brad Dougherty, who must decide whether to stay in. The bet is $130,000 to Brad Doherty. He's 39 years old, the youngest poker player in the final three, and Doherty is going in. So we have the makings of a huge hand here. This is really a bad break for Bob Veltri. And Holt says, it's too rich for me. And Veltri has to call now, but he has too much money in the pot. Waiting for Fistry. Wow. Veltri has king-queen, and Doherty has king-jack. Bob Veltri needs a jack. Or the pot goes to Brad Dougherty. 13 to 100 dollars. is. A four. And that is it. As Bob Veltri is knocked out. And doing the knocking is Brad Dougherty. Bob, you seem to be in control of the game until that big $500,000 pot that you lost to Don Holt. Uh, that really turned things around. Yes, it did. I wasn't getting too many hands. Yeah. I had to... Uh, robbed quite a few pots. I couldn't find many hands, so I had to work, and that was one of the biggest hands that I got when I got two pair. And uh, if he had an eight, he wins the pot, I figured. The last hand, were you surprised that Dougherty came in behind you? On this last hand? Yeah. Uh, basically, yes, but I couldn't turn the hand down at leaving myself with that many chips. I had to call it. Uh, he had to have uh, King Jack. He could have had two pair, and I still could have improved. Bob, congratulations. You played very well, but just weren't lucky today. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now the gold bracelet has been put. Here it is, the money in the bracelet coming out for the heads-up portion of this game. Uh, 410000 I believe, for second place, and a million dollars for first just the casual 600k pay jump. Keep in mind, this is 1991, so one million is actually worth about two million nowadays. He is going to remember the hand that put him out forever. We talked about Don Williams and timing in this tournament. Well, Brad Doherty had timing going for him. Don Holt opened the pot for a small bet. The flop was queen 10-9. Bob Beltry made a big raise with a king queen in the pocket, and lo and behold, there sat Brad Doherty with the nuts, a king jack, the best possible hand you can have in poker. He moved in and want all the money in that pot. Okay, heads up poker coming at you after this. Holt and Doherty, stay with us. I just wish I could time travel just to play some poker back in the 90s. It would have been so fun. And I would have and I would have gotten really rich because I'm not really good in 2021, but trust me, my skills from now back then would have been awesome. Poker, I'm Chris Marlowe, he's Chip Reese, and we have only two players left. Don Holt from Tucson, Arizona, and Brad Doherty from Reno, Nevada. How do you assess this matchup? Don's got the most chips right now, Chris. And if he sticks to his game plan, not playing any big pots with Brad, he should be all right. However, Brad plays very solid, 
If Don gets involved and has to play a big pot, he might be in trouble. Heads up poker, Texas Hold'em here at Binion's. Let's get back to the action. There are no losers when you come away from this final table. Both players are in as we await the flop. Three common cards, ace of clubs, seven of diamonds, four of hearts. Brad checks from the first position, representing a pair in the pocket. So, both players check. We go to fourth street, it's a six of spades. Here comes Don. So the bet is matched. And a nice little pot developing as we head to fifth street. Two of spades. Check to Holt. Maybe trying to draw Holt in. And they turn him over. Jack six. Two sixes wins this pot. So Brad Doherty wins the pot with a pair of sixes. <laughs> okay, the cards are out. Don Holt from Tucson, Arizona, going to call the blind and make a raise. Looks like he's raised about $35,000. So $35,000 to Brad Dougherty, and Dougherty calls. $75,000 pot. Here comes the flop. Nine of spades, nine, ten of hearts, six. six of diamonds. Brad checks, there's a possible spread out there. Somebody had a seven, eight. Brad checks, Don bets. And Holt. 120,000, 100,000. Fat chips, $100,000 is the bet, and Doherty. Brad says raise. And it looks like a raise coming. And it's going to be a healthy one. A $150,000 raise, and Don Holtz will raise all the way. Wow, here we go. This could be it right here. Don Holt. White shirt and the sunglasses. And Brad Doherty in the black sweatsuit. If Brad Doherty calls the biggest pot in World Series of poker history, this could be it. Doherty originally from Payette, Idaho. A gambler for 18 years and now faced with the biggest decision of his gambling and poker career. Maybe the biggest decision ever that he'll ever face. Doherty and Holt. And he throws it in. So a big, huge bet. Huge lead for Don Holt right now. I don't want to spoil anything, but pretty exciting to see uh, what will happen next as we are heads up for a million bucks here, which is pretty funny. Um, oh, Wiggum on Twitch says, Remco could have written Super System back then. Definitely not. Definitely not on Super System level. But compared to the average opponent of back then, uh, which... Maybe might be a little bit more similar to a Venetian deep stack. I would have uh, probably fared pretty well. Here, Darty all in. Here to Don Holt. Could this be the play at the World Series of Poker? And Holt has a pair of sixes. He showed his hand, which of course really doesn't make much difference at this point, does it, Chip? Uh, once Brad's all in. And Holt won't play a pair of sixes. Wow, tight fold so with the sixes. Very aggressive. He could have won the tournament right there. Once again, the cards go out here at the World Series of Poker. Brad Dougherty in the black and blue sweatsuit. Tucson Don. Brad Dougherty opens the pot for 35000 Chris. And we may have something brewing here. Holt calls. So the pot is right. 74000 in the pot. Waiting for the flop. 546, straight possibilities. Not likely when with a raised pot, both players figure to have bigger cards, but you never know. Especially with Tucson Don, he's pretty creative. Three of clubs on 4th Street. Check by Holt. Checks. And Dougherty now has a decision to make. They both check. <coughs> Last card coming. 5th Street. Six of hearts. Don looks like he's about to make a very large bet. Fearing to try and drive Brett out of the pot, but it might be reverse psychology. $180,000 <coughs> is the bet to Brad Dougherty. Final action. We started today with six players. We are down to two out of 215. Brad calls. And Dougherty calls. Don shows ace deuce. He had the straight. Six high straight. Six high straight for Holt. 
Dude, wow. he wins the pot. Hold wins again. Don is playing extremely well. He used the so, reverse psychology of making a big bet to make Brad think that he was bluffing. Well, some GTO stuff there from Don Hold with the over bet. I'm not sure if it was an over bet, but it's definitely a pretty large bet and uh, definitely not as common to see back in those days. Um, uh, Stranglehold on Twitch is asking, what channel did this originally air? I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it was either ESPN or CBS. Both those uh, channels had this in their broadcast package back in the day. Uh, Chris Marlowe, by the way, who's still doing commentary on the NBA, I believe for the Denver Nuggets. Um, I should get Chris Marlowe on the show to talk about some historic WSB action. That would be a lot of fun. Um, Patrick Knight says, they acted much faster last century. Um, they definitely did. And it was just like, it was just a different, different era and different game. A big bet to make Brad think that he was bluffing. So a huge win, that pot, a big one. Seeing Matt Waldron tuning in on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching, Matt. It's been a long time, man. Good to hear from you. And Brad Doherty. What is Brad going to do? Going to bet $40,000. And the call is made by Brad Doherty. So $84,000 in the pot. Four, five, ten, the unsuited on the flop. No flush draws out there this time. Brad checks. And Holt. Going to bet 100000 at least. $100,000 is the bet to Brad Doherty. Does he have that all-in look? Yes, he does. He's made his move. And Holt says he yes. Calls. There we go. He is going all the way. We have over a million-dollar pot here, I think, Chris. Uh, looking for the titles. Not Brad's only... Ace 10, two tens with an ace. That's what I thought Brad had. He had a eight, 10 with a big kicker. Tom's got king 10, two tens with a king. Oh, Brad's in the lead Don here by a lot. A king to win this pot. Ace 10 for Doherty, king 10 for Holt. Brad Doherty has the best hand. There are two cards left. Four straight. Fourth card is a jack. He's dead to a king now. He needs the king. Holt catches a king, he'll be our new world champion. Holt needs the king. If not, play continues. Nine. Nine. And Brad Doherty wins over one million dollars in that pot. <laughs> That's so funny. He wins over one million dollars in that pot, of course. That's in reference to the, the chips that he won. There was a million dollars up top. There was a 2.15 million in play. So stacks are now basically dead even. Uh, clearly, Don Holt had a lot of the smaller chips in front of him. That's why it looked as though Brad had a much bigger disadvantage in chips. Um, uh, Grigory is asking, uh, what are the blinds? No idea. But right now, the stack sizes are, are one million to 1.1. So we're basically tied. Heads up competition continues here at Binion's. Don Holt in white. I believe we've skipped a few hands and now Brad's in the lead. Dollars in chips and has made an unbelievable comeback. Dougherty raises seventy thousand and Holt is going to call. Hundred eighty-four thousand the pot. So a nice little wager before the flop and here we go. Eight of diamonds, Eight nine diamond of jack. hearts, Eight jack of jack. clubs. Good gambling cards here. Brad checks. And Holt is going all in. Don's going all the way. $750,000. Approximately $750,000. Brad may call. He's asking to count the money. Now, I'm not sure this bet would force Doherty to go all in, would it? No, he would still have some money left if he lost the pot. Probably two or 300000 He's going to call. And Darty is Brad going to call. So Don Holt. Kojak. He's wearing his lucky pants, and he'll need him in this one. For three Don's days, got a seven three. three. Of hearts. Don's got a straight draw. Don was bluffing. Three hearts. Brad's got two jacks. He's got to catch a Tampa 10 right yeah. or two running hearts to win this pot. Wow. Street. Big move. He catches a five. Now, this gives Don, Don eight possible to wins to win the pot. He needs a, a 10 or a Brad six. Darty Brad Darty on this card could become the World Series of Poker Champion. Don can win with a 10 or a 6. Don Holt, however, is still alive. Waiting for the last and final card. 4.5 to 100 dog here. 
An eight. And Doherty is the new World Series of Poker champion. Joining me now, the new World Series of Poker champion, Brad Doherty. Brad, your thoughts when you were down to $250,000 in chips? You turned it around with a flush hand. I had a long ways to come back. I knew I had to get it in gear somewhere. Find a hand to double up on, and I did. I got lucky. What changed the tempo? Was it that hand? Uh, that seemed to give you a lot of confidence. It helped. It gave me twice the amount of chips. What were you thinking about in the last hand? Uh, replay that last hand in your mind for us. This one? Yes. Well, I just evaluated. I didn't think he had a best he could have was a flush, a straight draw. Did so you know I, he was bluffing? No, I thought he might have a 10. I was just going to take the gamble. Brad, congratulations. A tremendous win. You are the World Series of Poker champion. Thank you. And, of course, to the victor go the spoils. There it is. One million dollars in prize money and the gold bracelet signifying there's a new hombre in the town of Las Vegas. For Don Holt, it was a bitter disappointment. The turning point coming on this hand. Doherty with a pair of tens and an ace. Holt's second best, a pair of tens and a king. What about the final play? What was going through the mind of Tucson Don Holt? We asked. The last hand, uh, you got caught bluffing. Uh, trying to be more aggressive or just an active of your own kind of play? No, I, well, I was trying to bluff the hand, and I'm still not drawing dead to a 10 or two hearts. It wasn't a good move retrospectively, but uh, that's the game. I did a lot of bluffing and got away with it. Sometimes you get caught. Don, you played a marvelous tourney. Congratulations, and thanks for stopping by. Can I say one thing? Absolutely. I'd like to say that these people, the Binions, put on the finest tournament. They're nice to the poker players, and it's just wonderful to be here. Great. Well, we appreciate it having you here. Thank you. We'll hurry back. There it was. The 1991 WSP main event, Brad Doherty takes it down for $1 million, the first ever million-dollar top prize in the history of the game. Of course, nowadays we see that almost every month when a live poker is in full swing. Uh, but it is really cool to see this footage. And we have all of this and much more available on Poker Go. So if you're new to our channel, PokerGo.com, go check it out. That is where all the action is. We have all the old main events from the past, 73, 78, 81. You can watch Stu Unger win two main events. Uh, and you can also, of course, watch every season of High Stakes Poker, every season of Poker After Dark. All the World Series of Poker final tables that were ever broadcast on TV are also available. Um, and we just have tons of content there with Super High Rollable, Poker Masters, US Poker Open. There is literally thousands of hours of stuff for you to watch, and we are always releasing new content. By the way, we are in the middle of a new season of Poker After Dark with some great episodes right off the bat as Daniel Negreanu is making an appearance. He's playing with Matt Berkey, Scott Seaver, Dan Smith, and a whole other host of characters on the show uh, where they're playing, I believe, 200, 400 No Limit Hold'em. So pretty big stakes, really fun action. And um, as always, Poker After Dark is a great setting. Um, we're taping more high-stakes poker action coming up later this summer. That's going to be released in the fall. So even more high-stakes poker action to come to Poker Go. Next week, I'm joining you guys once more to do a fun run it back show and then what we are doing is a raffle we are giving away a signed felt that was used inside the poker go studio i believe it is from high stakes duel i'll get confirmation on that uh, next week on the show i will show off the felt i, I will get you guys all uh, up to date on that and then we will also give away some signed decks of cards by phil and antonio and some uh, signed books by Mr. Phil Helmuth. All you have to do to enter the raffle is to sign up to the, or subscribe to the Running Back Clips channel on YouTube. That is our new channel uh, for clips of the show. And then uh, next week, just make sure to tune in and see if you can win a little prize here as a sign of appreciation from me to you, the poker fan. All right, that was it for Running Back today. Thanks all so much for tuning in, tuning in. I really appreciate it. I'll be back next week. We have daily clips going out, by the way, on Facebook and on our YouTube pages. So if you love poker, go and find those pages and make sure you are subscribed. It really helps us. And I'm pretty sure it's going to help you as well, staying entertained in the game of poker. For now, this was it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next week.